What's happening is day three at Riverside Festival. I'm joined by Peach residents Casey and Iso. Iso. Iso, Iso. Iso, 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 did I get that right? Yeah, you got Perfect. It. How are you feeling about Riverside today? Good, yeah, excited, yeah. yeah. Super excited. As you said, man, the sun is shining. You couldn't ask for a better day for it. Couldn't. Absolutely perfect. Nice. So tell me a bit about Peach, tell me a bit about yourself. When did you both start DJing and uh, how did Peach come about? So Peach came about 2017. Um, me and Rachel kicked it off because literally we were sick of going out to nights that were just overrun by men. Yeah. Really at like hip hop nights and like trap nights and there wasn't really a scene for it then, there was some grime and stuff but it was just overrun by men and it just it wasn't a good vibe so yeah. we thought... Yeah. Felt comfortable in that. Exactly. Yeah. So let's do our thing, see how it goes and... Yeah. And it went. Brought, brought, brought <laughs> yeah. the girls in, stuck to what we do and just built up the crowd over the years. And how long would that ago would that have been? 2017. 2017, so about five, five years, years now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so, like, early musical influences and actual beginning to DJ yourself before yeah. Peach, like, who are some of the artists that inspired you? Oh, my God, you put me on the spot here. <laughs> so many, like... Look, like, yeah, that's... that's how, how especially as a DJ, like, you're playing all sorts of music, you know, it's not just, like, specific people, but... Um, yeah. I mean, I was really influenced by grime and stuff in the early days. Like, oh. I started out in Levels Radio, so that was all really grime-influenced, and then I just kind of... What I loved growing up was like hip hop and rap music, so I, I just started opening up to that and, and started to play that in my radio sets and stuff. And I felt like that was me, like yeah. that was more what I wanted to do. So I just kind of stuck with it and then um, based Peach kind of around those genres and do everything else around it. But early influences like Track Girl, yeah. Tiffany Calver, even in the early days I'm talking about. Um, Else have you got? I'm like went blank. I'm honest. I'm such like I do DJing for me. It's I actually don't really take in a lot from the outside. But funnily enough, watching grime DJs live was uh, one of the. <laughs> funnily enough, that's actually one of the best ways I kind of got into understanding what DJing was all about because it, they're super interactive with the mixer and the decks and everything. So definitely going to like grime events at first. But same as Casey, I was a lot more. Um, into hip hop like rap genres and uh, now obviously I've expanded it way more since starting to DJ. Yeah. Um, but yeah, grime definitely did have something. Nice. Really and obviously Riverside being primarily an electronic music festival, you're bringing something different today to yep. um, to it. Like, how does it feel? It feels good. I mean, a bit scary. A yeah. little, just to see how people take it, I suppose. But like you said, like this was like got such a wide range of sound, <laughs> and like you're going to cater to that and fit in so well. I'm just going to keep doing what I normally do. Yeah. I'm going to stick with my rap and trap, run a little bit of garage, a little bit of grind from the early days, yeah. what inspired me, and then just let you come on after and just fuck it up. We, well, you can find festival vibes in every genre, exactly. to be honest. Yeah. Like, yeah. We're just here to provide our take on the festival. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah so um, playing like nights with Peach and then coming to Riverside, like, do you prepare differently for a festival set instead of a club? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. I think, um, especially when it's a festival, you have to bear in mind that you've got so many different age and like ages of people, different types of people coming for different sounds, different performers. So I always think when I'm doing a festival, just to try and create a sound that people know, like maybe I'll play some rap music or drill music that's been in the charts and stuff like yeah. that. So like if it's someone right at the back, they'll be like, I know that track, yeah, like, yeah. I'm here for it. Yeah, exactly. And it just pulls them in a bit more. So. Yeah, definitely a lot different from mm -hmm. club to festival, but I love doing a festival. Yeah. You know that? It's just yeah, yeah, because like the audience is like all passing by, yeah. so it's just whatever is exciting enough to pull them in. I feel like that's more the goal of like DJing at a festival compared to a club, because a club there's specific people that are there to go to that event, and that's yeah. it. Whereas here, people are just here to see what's about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so it makes it a lot more fun. Yeah. Have you played together before? Are you used to playing with each other by now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Peach yeah, girls, man, we're here. Covid's like kind of messed up my timeline a little bit. It's kind of hard to remember when things started and what, but um, yeah, it's been a while now. How did you deal with that whole period of Covid? Like, put, obviously from 2017, you used to putting parties on and then that whole period where it just like, it was this yeah. void. Like, the, I spoke to artists before and like, some people say it inspired them and gave them time to like, focus on music. Others say I did nothing. How did, how, how did that experience go for you? I mean, for me, it was a bit different because um, I, ju I just started opening up 644 Studios. So yeah. we were building at that time. We just took that time. We opened our doors literally at the start of COVID. Yeah. And we were like, shit, man, what are we going to do now? So we just took our time over that year and just built like hands with our, with our hands. Literally, yeah. like just built it up so that when the pandemic 
blew over, we were ready and we were like yeah. ready to take in bigger artists and stuff like that. So for me, I just focused on the studio yeah. at that time, making music, building the studio, making sure it was right. Obviously doing some radio sets and stuff like that, doing some live streams here and there. Mm. Just keeping yourself busy. Like, yeah. yeah. What about you? I mean, for me, honestly, um, it definitely gave me time to sort of like experiment in a non-club environment. So like making mixes for myself rather than like, you know, yeah. like, you know, to get people bouncing around. But um, at the same time, it's really lonely. Yeah. Because you have no one to really share it with and you, you can go online and stuff, but it was quite lonely. So it was, it was a very uh, personal sort of experience. Mm -hmm. like, so like, I was motivated, but it was very much for me. Yeah. It wasn't something I was making to necessarily like make for a room of people. You know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you were talking about radio sets, I seen you doing it at uh, One Extra, how was that experience for Amazing, you? Amazing, yeah. Uh, <laughs> a dream come true, yeah. that's the only thing I can say. I used to dream about that when I was in school. And yeah. I was obsessed with Radio One and shit. And then I went down just to do some voiceovers and stuff and just being able to speak in the mics and hear the quality of your voice coming back <laughs> in a system like that was just like, it was mind blowing. Yeah, Amazing. I loved it. So tw 2017, has there been some memorable nights? Is there any ones that stick out the most? Over the years of throwing parties. Oh Definitely. yeah, come on, yeah. <laughs> come on. The yachty one with Cash, Josie and Cash. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God, that one was crazy, that and it was an all girl lineup as well. Like, it's just that it one was, was actually insane. mental. Yeah, it was insane. Was yeah. Energy was crazy. Room was packed. It's good vibes. Yeah. Whereabouts are you throwing these parties? Like, what are the sort of the venues that you have? You got like a resident spot somewhere? So right now we don't have like a current resident spot. Right now we're doing it in SWG3 warehouse and then we're going to start one in room two and we're just going to see how it goes over the months and, and see which fits. Like we're trying yeah. to find a venue that will make it feel like Peach again. We used to be in uh, stereo, we were in art school, quite small, intimate. And it was, you just want to bring back that vibe again. So the next couple will be trials just to get the yeah. set up, see how it feels and just bring it back to that crazy chaotic feeling before the pandemic, really. Yeah, honestly, yeah. like the pandemic has shut down venues as well. Art school got shut down. Yeah. So it's kind of like, we're just, I think we're just experimenting for now and seeing what works. Yeah. So in terms of plans for the summer, have you got things coming up? Yeah, we have got, um, so this is the first festival set for Peach. Um, and then we've got a Crip City event next month, which is in platform. Um, we're going to be playing at Transmit and other lands festival as well. Oh, amazing. A couple of things round about then. Hopefully do a little peak summer party somewhere. Right. Try and get that planned. We'll yeah, we'll see. We'll see how Hopefully that goes. Hopefully the whales like this. I know, man. <laughs> <laughs> that would be perfect. Boat party. Oh, my God. I know, a boat party. I would love to DJ on a boat. That'd yeah. Oh, someone's something. watching. Yeah. You've got a boat. Yeah. You have a boat. Let's do it. <laughs> 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 amazing. Well, I hope your set goes great. Thank it was you. really nice to meet you both and Thank speak you so to you. Much. So, Thank pleasure. You. Thank, Thank you. you.